Now, one of the interesting things about the Samsung Galaxy S25 is it has a special version of the Snapdragon 8 Elite processor in it. It's called, cunningly, the uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite 4 Galaxy. Now, the question is, what advantages are there by having the 4 Galaxy version? Is there a better CPU performance? Is there better GPU performance? And more importantly, what is the sustained performance like? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Snapdragon 8 Elite 4 Galaxy. Is there a Galaxy advantage? Now, I've covered, of course, the Snapdragon 8 Elite in previous videos. I'll leave a link in the description below. So if you don't know much about that chip, do go check out that video. I'm assuming you're familiar with it. We will just mention two or three quick things now because it's the, the relates to the differences between the four Galaxy version and the standard version. This is the CPU layout for the standard version. And the big thing about the four Galaxy version is that those prime cores there are clocked uh, slightly higher. So it's up to 4.47 gigahertz. So that's gonna give it a peak performance advantage compared to the standard Snapdragon 8 uh, Elite processors. Qualcomm or Samsung haven't told us much more about, for example, any advantages with the GPU. They're just still quoting the standard numbers that we get with the uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite. However, we will see there is some differences when we come to some benchmarks. Okay, so let's dive straight into the first set of numbers. This is Geekbench 6. These are the single core numbers. This here is the Honor Magic 7 Pro with a Snapdragon 8 Elite. This one is the OnePlus 13 with a Snapdragon 8 Elite. This is the Galaxy S24 Ultra with the previous generation Snapdragon 4 reference. And then this last one here is the Snapdragon uh, 8 Elite for Galaxy inside of the Galaxy S25 Ultra. And what we can basically see is there is a 5.8% increase in the uh, single core score for the uh, four galaxy version and that translates when we look at the multi-core score into a nine percent performance boost for the multi-core of the snapdragon 8 elite 4 galaxy so uh, that is significant considering it is basically the same generation of processor it's basically the same uh, piece of uh, technology but the 4 Galaxy version is giving us that boost in performance mainly down to that slight increase in the clock speed. Now we take a look at some GPU numbers this is 3D Mark three different 3D Mark tests here the ray tracing test and then wildlife extreme and then normal wildlife. What we see is that the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra has a greater peak performance of 4.3% compared to the uh, OnePlus 13 uh, for the Solar Bay uh, benchmark. We see a 2.7% uh, improvement again compared to the OnePlus 13 for the Wildlife Extreme benchmark. And then interestingly enough, when you get to the normal Wildlife benchmark, in fact, uh, the OnePlus 13 is ever so slightly ahead. Now that actually comes down to within the margin of error. Uh, as you rerun these tests for various little different reasons, you're going to get slight variations of the score. So they're basically neck and neck. So we do see some improvements in the GPU, uh, just depend on the exact circumstance. Now, peak performance is fine, but what does that mean for sustained performance when you run something over a long time? So this is the wildlife stress test. It runs it 20 times in a row. And as you can see up here in the top left hand corner, we've got the Galaxy S25 Ultra and the OnePlus 13 basically with that same score. That's how it starts off. Just slightly lower there is the Honor Magic 7 Pro. And then this blue line here at the bottom is for reference, that's the uh, Galaxy S24 Ultra from last year. Now what we can see here is that overclocking has consequences because straight away after the first run, we see a very sharp dip here from the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Of course, we're gonna see a dip on all the phones. I mean, that happens across all of them from last year's phone, this year's phone. Every phone starts to throttle because of the heat being produced, but that's a big dip there by the uh, S25 Ultra, less so 
for the OnePlus 13. And in fact, the uh, S25 Ultra goes down below the scores of the Honor Magic 7 Pro. In fact, by the time you get to three, four runs, really, they kind of they match up here all the way along. So the four Galaxy Advantage is certainly here at the beginning, couple of runs. But once you get further and further down the test, we can see that, in fact, it turns out that the Galaxy S25 Ultra is the slower of the three Snapdragon 8 Elite uh, devices. And in fact, it is the OnePlus 13 that comes out uh, on top. But we can see that all three of them are a significant improvement over last year's device. So that's good news for everybody. The uh, 8 Elite is a, a big step forward in performance. Uh, and sustained performance compared to last year's processor. However, this is this thing, this line down here, this drop here by the uh, S25 Ultra just shows what happens after three, four runs. You're gonna really see that throttling and the performance dropping off. Now, if you want to study those numbers, not in a video, there is an article over on the Android Authority website with similar information in it. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.